Evaporative cooling. This was just a general question, um, not associated with a problem. My question concerns evaporative cooling. I understand how it's achieved mechanically and I understand it theoretically, but I cannot see it in my mind, the interaction between the air molecules, water molecules, heat transfer, phase change, et cetera. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I wanna acknowledge, this is a really honest question, I like it. Um, this is a complex thing to get your head around and oftentimes understanding comes in layers. So, you know, it's it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, you can understand it mechanically and, and theoretically, but can't see it visually. Yeah, I, I've definitely been there, especially with this particular topic. And it's um, even as I was trying to prepare for today in terms of like how to explain it, I had to kind of scratch my head and, and rewrite a couple of times. So I'll give it a try and um, feel free to chime in and, and question if you think this makes sense or if you feel like you want to go deeper. But and I was going to draw a picture, but I'll actually just use your picture because this is perfectly good. We can kind of point to this. Maybe I can even annotate on here. Get some colors going. Draw. Yeah, we go. That's perfect. So we've got this dry air in. So this is our entering air coming in. And this is our leaving air, which we don't care much about. We're just going to reject it after the fact. But um, and, and this air doesn't necessarily have to be particularly dry, but it's comparatively dry because it's going to take on water vapor. So by the time it leaves, it'll be carrying more moisture. Um, but what do we know that what do we know happens? We have this. Uh, warm return air coming back, they say hot water in, fine. I call that, generally speaking, if there's a water cool chiller, this would be the condenser water return and the cold water out would be the condenser water supply. So the condenser water return is warm, perhaps even hot. And as that drips down the fill of the cooling tower and the fan blows this air over the fill, over the, what is the point of dripping it down the fill? It's spreading it out it's uh, increasing the surface area by spreading it out as much as possible. So it's splitting the particles apart, not, not on a, at like a, a microscopic level, but it's um, just creating more interactions between the air molecules and the water molecules by having more surface area. So that, that's what's happening when it's dripping down the fill. And we know that some of that water, not all of it, in fact, not most of it. Most of it just drips down from the hot to the cold and lands in the basin. But a small amount of it evaporates. And that's phase change. And in order for phase change to happen, there's um, the, there's two things that are happening. Air, air is undergoing latent heating because that water vapor is being added to the air. But the question is, and this is the big important question, is where does the energy come from? And I'll pause the cooling tower explanation for a minute and do a, a kind of a tangent, a thought experiment. If you're boiling water on the stove, you've got a flame and a pot of water and you're adding sensible heat. In that case, it's very intuitive. It's very obvious that we're driving the phase change of the water. So where did the energy come from to cause the water to evaporate? It came from the heat from some, you know, from gas or electric or, you know, whatever fuels being burned to produce that heat. So that's pretty intuitive. But where does the energy come from in a cooling tower when the liquid water changes phase? It has to come from somewhere. It's less obvious when it's evaporation, but it still is coming from the remaining water. It's not boiling it, but the, a small amount of the water is evaporating. And that process is removing heat from the remaining liquid water. So that's the heat transfer that, that's happening. That results in sensible cooling of the remaining water. Latent heating of the air as it's going by, as it's taking on this moisture, this phase change that's going from liquid to vapor, and sensible cooling of the remaining water that then drips down into the collection basin. So what is a cooling tower really then? Cooling tower, the way I look at it, is just a device for encouraging evaporation. What do we do? We take the hot water, we spread it out, we sprinkle it over this fill, we blow air over it. We're doing anything and everything we possibly can to encourage as much evaporation of that water into the airstream as possible. And um, and as a result, if if um, the entering air is fairly dry and we do a good job of, of creating these conditions, then we'll evaporate a good amount of that water. It doesn't have to be much to get the cooling effect that we're looking for, but it's enough that some of the condenser water is now gone and we have to make it up. So we have a 
a water supply and a makeup pump that um, adds water to the system as it evaporates. So when we boil water, it's obvious we are putting sensible heat in to drive the phase, phase change. But when water changes from a liquid to a vapor, anytime water changes from a liquid to a vapor, there is a gain of latent heat and um, the energy has to come from the surroundings. In this case, that's the liquid water. Um, and really the magic there is since phase change requires substantial energy, it's kind of the same principle as a refrigeration cycle. When we go from a low pressure to a high pressure condition, uh, using a compressor to go up and using an expansion device to go back down, the refrigerant undergoes phase change and significant amounts of energy can go in and out when we start causing a substance to change phase. In the case of an evaporative cooling tower, we're taking advantage of the fact that we can get water to change phase and that that uh, consumes a substantial amount of energy. It removes it from the liquid water. And uh, yeah, that's how we can meaningfully cool large volumes of condenser water and reject heat from a chiller and uh, you know keep that process going around and around in an open loop. So I hope that helps. I think if you were already kind of almost there, maybe that tip you over the edge and give you a little bit better understanding.